motion to waive the reading uh, of Article 7 in its entirety and um, uh, take that motion from Ms. Barnes. So I have a second from Ms. Griffin. All those in favor? Uh, raise your cards, down cards. Any opposed? Thank you. Um, and uh, move to open discussion on Article uh, uh, 7. Do I have a motion to open discussion? Moved by Mr. Bridal, uh, seconded by Ms. Barnes. Uh, and we have our DPW director to start our discussion. You, do you have uh, individuals you'd like to have assist on your presentation? Yeah, it's Stan, just okay. in case of questions. Uh, Tim Vadney with Wright Pierce, Mike Curry with Wright Pierce, and Mike Doobie, the wastewater treatment plant operator. Uh, supervisor is uh, in, up in the audience, too. Okay. Uh, all non residents. All right. So we have two, yeah, just a moment, please. We have two individuals from Wright Pierce, uh, and then we have a uh, DBW employee. Um, so it's Mr. Pierce, uh, Tim Vadney, V A D N A I S, V A D N E Y, and the other uh, Mike Curry. Curry, C U R R Y. C U R R Y. Thank you. All right, Mr. Jacobs, you'd like to begin our discussion? Yes. Back uh, two years ago, the town appropriated ninety thousand dollars for a wastewater treatment plant study, typically called a facility study or a, uh, what's known under the EPA rules as a 201 facility study. Purpose of said study is to look at your plant from top to bottom uh, on a regular basis, they sometimes every seven, every 10 years. Um, our last one was done in 2006. So 10 years had lapsed and we had a top to bottom uh, review done of the facility. Um, it costs that amount of money because not only do uh, wastewater engineers look at it, but uh, structural engineers look at it, electrical engineers, all number of things they're looking at it from a code uh, perspective. Uh, as a result of that, a complete study was uh, forwarded out in September um, called the 201 facility study. It's on the town's website. It'll, it talked about that there's a total of $40 million worth of uh, work that needs to get done in the plant. And <clears throat> if you want to roll the slideshow that we asked for the, and some people can see that as I labor on. Um, what was identified out of that is uh, all the projects were put into a high priority, a medium priority, and a low priority. Because certainly some things, you know, just like in our houses or our, our cars, certain things um, need to get done first before, you know, for instance, you wouldn't put new tires on a car without a, needing the transmission if that was also needed work. So uh, what you see in purple are all the things that have existed at the site since, uh, well, as it says on the slide, upgrades in 64, 74, 2002, 2004, and 2012. I was here for the 2012 upgrade and that simply was a $1 million project for a new sludge press. So everything else has been in there for a number of years. To give you, a, for instance, um, the when all the wastewater comes into the at the top center of the photo into the headworks, there's three pumps there that pump that water into the plant. Those pumps were installed in 1974. Um, two out of three are always running, and all summer long, most of the time, all three are running. We treat about, on average, 2 million gallons a day, but during the summer we regularly bounce up to 4 million gallons a day. So it's a, the worn out of the before you is to address the physical deficiencies in the plant, the age of the plant, um, and a portion of, of this $13.8 million article was also to address the um, overall plant capacity in the terms of uh, lower right, you see <clears throat> four boxes. Those are aeration lagoons. And that is the, the heart of the plant. That's where literally we pump in a lot of air uh, to the tune of $160,000 of electricity to push that air into the plant every year. And it works with the bugs to basically reduce the waste. That's, it's, uh, it's no more complex. well, it is more complicated than that, but in layman's terms, that's what it does. Um, the 2004, the last facility study and the facility study done in 1988 
talked about, and those are the aeration lagoons in the lower right, they talked about um, both times that we needed to um, consider uh, adding on another two aeration lagoons as we were going to continue to bounce up against our operating capacity. Even though I tell you we're a 4 million MGD plant, the state has what they call a threshold number in. We're only allowed to add in users up to 80% of our threshold. And we are regularly bouncing up against that limit on a, basically on a seasonal basis. When everyone flushes into town for the summer, we literally, um, well, we exceed the 80% on 4th of July weekend. We exceed the 80% on September uh, weekend. So the, the ultimate overall growth of the town is really keyed to the, to the plant itself. <coughs> the photo on the lower right is showing you some uh, oxidation. That's actually an electrical box and the conduit. The toxic nature of the plant is actually eroding the contents within the plant. And the top right photo shows a clarifier installed in either the, I think it was 74 or 78. Um, essentially the structure is falling apart. Uh, it can only last so long in a, in a septage environment without eventually corroding and falling in on itself. And that one right at the moment is offline. Um, lower right photo actually shows some of the corrosion. The, what we deal with is sulfur gas. The lower left is a penny. The, if we leave a penny on the desk, given the air quality in the plant, it will totally corrode within 24 hours. It'll look like a 70-year-old coin. Um, so that's the kind of environment that the, the staff, the staff on the upper right, that they currently work in. And part of what we're asking for, part of what's included in this 13.8, are a number of uh, improvements which will allow for air quality um, improvements, basically a change of air. Right now we don't really have that capability within the, within the plant. So it's getting to be a, uh, a toxic environment. Um, with that, in consideration with the, uh, okay, uh, this one here, total cost of 13.8, and without my glasses I can read Headworks, aeration tank additional, primary clarifier one, that's one of the round tanks being uh, repaired, uh, gravity thickener number one, that's another round tank where we actually settle the water. Uh, the plant water system, we recycle a lot of the water the way it's currently pipe, pumped or, or piped within the plant. Uh, we could cut down on a lot of our internal water. Uh, thickened sludge transfer pump is one of them is shot. Polymer, we add polymer to the, to the sludge basically to thicken it so we can get rid of it. Um, our septage handling area is in major need of repair. I think one of the past photos showed you an actual column that's totally eroding. The operations building, again, that's the air quality. When it says maintenance garage, that's, we're not like getting a new maintenance garage, we're making improvements in the maintenance garage. Um, you'd be appalled if you were in that particular building. Um, and the SCADA, what that stands for is, right now we, we do operate the plant 24 hours a day, but Mike Doobie, Mike Carl, uh, they actually take a laptop home with them, and if there's an alarm situation at the plant, they can actually control pumps on and off remotely with the SCADA system. So as we make improvements to the plant, we're continually making improvements to our SCADA system, our computer that allows us to monitor. If we didn't have that, we'd have to staff the plant 24-7. But this allows us to, to operate the plant more cost-effectively without a lot more labor. Um, so those are the things that are covered in Article 7. Um, I would encourage you, there's a new video on uh, Channel 22. It also can be accessed, accessed on the town's Facebook page. And um, to, to see these things in, in more detail. But in keeping with our, I'll ask for questions at this point. Thank you. Anyone, uh, <laughs> anyone wishing to be heard on Article 7? Ms. Wolsey?
discussion okay. of that. Okay. I just wanted to uh, check with Mr. Jacobs because there may be an amendment offered here. This is the most important facility in this community. And we have to make a commitment to maintain it. I have three areas of concern here. The first is offsetting revenues. The second is staffing. And the third is maintenance. I looked at the Wright Pierce report. They laughed at me because I've kind of made a mess. When I got to page 2-11, it showed an industrial surcharge fee. And in the back of the report, it has a list of communities in Maine and New Hampshire which assess that fee for industries. That brewery, which is about to go up for auction, has been running for four years. And no such thing as an industrial surcharge fee apparently was considered. And now I find from the news media, the Hampton Union, that the pretreatment section of that brewery was never done. And some of the waste was trucked out of town. And that brewery has had a significant impact on the treatment plant. My next concern under offsetting revenues is this. In 2002, the planning board of its own volition submitted Article 11, which requested the authorization from the town of Hampton for the planning board to assess municipal and school impact fees. In 2004, the school impact fees for SAU 90 and SAU 21 were put in place. <coughs> By the time we got to 2012, with not a sign of impact fees for the municipality, Mr. Welch and I, Fred, you're as guilty as I am, went to the planning board December 5th and basically begged to see impact fees on development assessed. Mr. Emmerich looked us in the eye and said, we will never tax developers. I stopped in the um, office of the uh, where are we here? I stopped into the office of the uh, Mr. Schultz, and I asked him to give me an update on the permit amounts through 2017. Going back to 20, 2002, when the planning board got the authority to assess municipal impact fees, through December 31st, 2017, the building inspector has issued permits in the amount of $502,765,513. I have no idea what the revenue could have been had the impact fees been assessed. But these selectmen up here tonight or today would have been very happy, I think, to be able to say to you as taxpayers in Hampton, well, due to impact fees, we have a little piggy bank of money, maybe a million, half a million, two million, that we can assign to help pay for this bond to take the burden off the taxpayers' backs. But they can't do that because the impact fees have never been assessed. My number two concern is staffing. Mr. Welch has said publicly that he anticipates losing 17 members of the Public Works Department in the next two years. Five experienced members of the department have already left. It takes time to attract candidates, to train them, etc. But we need a healthy Public Works Department 
to get the job done. So I am concerned about the staffing requirements. And number three, maintenance. I know that the selectmen made faces at me, but I will say, and I don't know if the camera can pick this up, no facility in Hampton should look like that. It's a miracle. This is November 24th, 2017 in the Hampton Union. The Hampton Union photographer took those pictures. First of all, I'm very concerned for the health of our employees, and it's a miracle that we haven't been sued for putting our public works employees at risk working in conditions like that. There's no excuse for that. I'm hoping that the engineers who did the report will help to figure out a maintenance schedule, a 365-day-a-year or Monday through Friday maintenance schedule, so that when we have the new facility, when we have the new improvements done, they won't look like a building in Afghanistan. We've got to look for the health of our employees. We've got to look at the way this uh, construction and, and renovation will work. Do we need to do it? Absolutely. But I would like to see it done. And someday, someday, attention planning board with offsetting revenue. Thank you, Ms. Wilsey. Um, Mr. Kravitz. Thank you. Next speaker. Uh, Sonny Kravitz, 8 St. Sears Drive, Hampton. I can't think of a better example of penny wise and pound foolish. You, some of the equipment in the in the wastewater treatment go back to the 70s. And this is 2018, and they're supposed to do the job. It, it's unreal. I mean, unless you start solving the problems, it's just going to get worse. Portsmouth is spending $95 million to upgrade their wastewater treatment plant. In today's Portsmouth Herald, there was an article about the Coakley Group. Portsmouth it's been a super fun site since 1982. Portsmouth has been contributing over the past few years $350,000. This year they're going to contribute $275,000. I mean, you have to come into this century to start dealing with the issues. Just kicking them down the road is not solving anything. Thank you, Ms. Gravitz. Ms. Griffith. Hey, Ms. Barnes, excuse me. It's early for me to be grabbing the wrong name. I'm sorry. Um, no problem, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Regina Barnes, 95 Presidential Circle. I'd like to say a couple things about this wastewater treatment plant bond. It's very important. Um, I know there was some concerns about the price tag on it, and Wright Pierce actually did some additional work in relation to that. But I want to say that this is pretty much the heart of our community. If anything happens to it, or if the safety conditions down there aren't fixed for our workers, it's going to be something that will be detrimental to the town as a whole. So, Mr. Moderator, I'd like to make an amendment. Is it proper to do that now? You may. I'd like to amend the amount of the wastewater treatment bond to $11,780,000. $11,780,000. $11,780,000. $11,780,000. Okay. Before you go further, is there a second, second to Ms. Barnes, seconded by Mr. Griffin? Okay. And there's a reasoning for that. Uh, there was a lot of concern from certain voters. We want to make sure that this bond passes this year. It's detrimental to our public works department. <coughs> so if I could also please have the town manager address some recent findings we have found out with our potential SRF funding. Mr. Moderator. Uh, the state of New Hampshire, up until mid-year 2017, authorized a 20% share in improvements to wastewater treatment plants through the SRF funding program. In the latter part of 2017, they amended that program. And in amending the program, they have reduced participation by municipalities. For those of us who are <clears throat> getting a little older, we can remember back in the 50s and 60s when the federal government paid 
of the cost of wastewater treatment plants. The state 20% and the town 5%. The 70% is gone. The 20% has now been reduced to 15% maximum. And in accordance with their program, the new program, and I'll quote one of the major goals of that program, provide reduced cost financial assistance to municipalities. That speaks for itself. Uh, they are evaluating the programs for improvements to municipal plants by encouraging the development of regionalization, regionalized utilities. <clears throat> and they have reduced the 20% to three brackets. One is zero to 5%. One is 5 to 10 percent, and one is 10 to 15 percent. And their evaluation of our application to SRF, which included 17 plus million dollars worth of potential improvements to the plant, that includes the warrant article that's in front of you today, plus the so called marsh pipes at 4 million two, our 20 percent share would be 3.6 million plus. They have reduced us because of our financial ability to support the plant to 5% for less than $700,000. That's a change in funding of 2.9 million plus. That's the way it's going to be. I suspect that when we amend this application today, this will be re-voted by the state in June and it may go to zero. Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Welch. Anyone wishing to be heard on the amendment? The amendment only. Mr. Zanoy, you wish to be heard on the amendment? Jerry Zanoy, 16 Presidential Circle, Hampton. <clears throat> Speaking for myself, I support this amended article. I think the critical items have been properly identified by the town with reference to the Wright Pierce report, which is 200 plus pages, which I have studied extensively. And it's complete with charts, graphs, and data tables. It's excellent. It's a very good report. We have an aging plant. We do. It needs a front to back upgrade. It does. It hasn't really been done front to back in 43 years. It's going to be done in three phases. And right now, that's the plan. And it's cost effectively as possible. All items on the list represent no frill infrastructure. I've been in the plant when I was a selectman in the uh, fourth quarter of 010, 011, and into 012. I know this plant. As a matter of fact, last week, last Thursday, I think it was, I went over and spent two hours in the aeration area just to take a hard look, make sure I know where I am. Just to help the article a little bit, I'm just going to say that all items, yeah, that no new buildings, there's no new buildings being built, but space is being reallocated in both the garage as well as the operations building. We have chemicals that have to be segregated better. We have people in amongst electronic equipment, which is not good. We have to do heating and ventilation and air conditioning and electrical upgrades, blah, blah, blah but there's no new bricks and mortar. And SCADA, by the way, because I know it's written that way in the warrant article, is a, it really means it's a, it's a supervisory uh, uh, mechanism to monitor the processes throughout the plant, including the pump station, electronically. If anything fails, there's a warning that goes off and has been previously described. Operators are notified at home. They're there to fix the problem. Can't wait till 8 o'clock in the morning. <clears throat> SCADA means supervisory control and data acquisition. Fancy, but it's, it's critical. I'm not so much concerned about preventative maintenance as uh, Mrs. Woosley is because when I was there in 010, 11, and 12, we put a whole system in. Very comprehensive. And it's computerized. They can go in in the morning or the first of the week and pull up what they need to do. 
It took us three or four months to do that one. Mr. Doobie and myself worked on that extensively. <clears throat> These operators in that wastewater treatment plant are very good people and they're very competent. I must say. So we, we really should be proud of them. The atmosphere is, you know, isn't obviously one you want to work in. That's why we want to do some heating and ventilation and air conditioning. Hydrogen sulfide, the rotten egg smell is prevalent. It is corrosive in nature. It does work on the equipment, negatively speaking. When it comes to capacity, if you will, we haven't had but a 2% increase in hydraulic water flow in five years. Not an issue. Not an issue. Water flow is not an issue. Except when the tides get high and the moon gets full and we have storms and you have a spike. The big issue was contamination, which is coming in from, we think, one source, highly concentrated pollutions. And we think we're getting that under control. Certainly, any new sewer applications will be thoroughly scrutinized, I'm sure, by the town manager and DPW director with really, really tight controls, including uh, fines for violations. And I, I, I can perceive it going even stronger than that. <clears throat> Sewer ordinance itself is being reviewed, uh, reviewed for potential revenue uh, opportunities. Uh, new developments, especially new buildings, new hotels, new condos, all of that stuff. That's being reviewed very closely because there's a lot of opportunities in there where... Mr. Zanoy, yes. I just step back from the podium a little bit because I think you're bumping up against those microphones that okay. affect how you're going to be heard right. across the miles. And uh, also ask you to wrap up if you could. I've got some speakers behind you. Okay. And I understand you're in favor of the... Uh, I am in favor of it and support it. Um, and we need it. This is no fooling around. We need this. We got a new school renovation going on. We got the fire stations put in. In previous years, the police. Did. This is needed, guys. We've got to get. We've got to start straightening it out. We can't put this off because there's got to be another phase and another phase. We've got to work this thing. This is critical. Otherwise, we start releasing stuff into the mar into the tributaries that lead to the ocean, which are out of spec limits. And then we get trouble. Every permit will have to be reviewed by the state DES. And I was in on that in 010 with Fred. <clears throat> they wanted to review every single sewer permit for every building or every house that was going up. All right, we, can't, we can't allow that. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Uh, Did you want to be heard, sir? Okay. All right. Thank you. So, Ms. Ms. Wolsey, two men. Ms. Wolsey, two handsome men. Ms. Wolsey, fixing before. the rug. Ms. Wolsey, a really quick point of inquiry. No, no, Ms. Wolsey, I just want to make sure you're here to speak to the amendment only. Okay. Yes. All right. And would you be kind enough to ask the finance director if she could give us a calculation on the amount of interest, uh, which would be added to the uh, new figure? Okay. The, and that because that way we'll have the total package. Right. Let her work on that. Uh, and while um, uh, Mr. Jones, you'd like to be heard while we're working on some interest calculations. <clears throat> on the amendment, please. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Timothy Citizen Jones, if you read the bottom of this one article, the Budget Committee recommended this 8 to 1. I was the one that was opposed. Um, and the reason I was opposed is now being corrected with this amendment. <laughs> and when the Budget Committee reconvenes later in the day, I will seek to change my vote in favor if this amendment passes. So I thank uh, Selectman Barnes for bringing this number more in line with our actual needs. And I encourage everyone to vote for this amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. On the amendment. Yes. I don't know if I'm the only one who doesn't really follow, yeah, but... you just got to state your name for oh, the... Oh, excuse uh, me. Carolyn Fetter, 206 Woodland Road. Could somebody please just explain a little bit more why the number is changing? Is there anything being left out, or is it just uh, cost efficiencies that were discovered, or could you just explain where the Certainly. new number is coming from? Certainly. Mr. Jacob? Yeah. 
Good and fair question. Um, what's been reduced from the overall scope of work with the two additional aeration lagoons? Uh, in light of what's happening with uh, uh, one property going up for auction, and secondly, um, it would give us more time to collect more what we call BOD data, um, biological oxygen demand, and um, this this portion won't go away. It's just being shifted to what would hopefully be phase two. So um, it'll give us time uh, over the next two to three years to gather more data, uh, but that's all we're doing is postponing it. And it was uh, uh, it proved out reasonable in the end. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jacob. Mr. McNamara. <laughs> Uh, Brendan McNamara, 487 Ocean Boulevard. Um, in keeping with the wisdom of the moderator, I'm going to keep it real short. Thank you. I support this article as amended. <laughs> Tom Lockman, 12 Maplewood Drive. Um, these upgrades represent wise and necessary investments in our community's infrastructure and in our future. It's also a moral obligation for the people who work there to make sure we keep them free from harm, send them home safe every night, the same way they came to work. Uh, and finally, while we recognize there are costs to doing these upgrades, there are also costs to not doing these upgrades, right, that would really harm our community. So I support this article, and I hope you will, too. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Do we have any uh, updated interest information at this time? Oh, up on the screen? So with the amendment, we've reduced the principal amount of the proposed bond, and consequently, we have reductions in um, payments, uh, in, um, interim payments, and total amount of the cost of the project, as stated in yellow. And I have the total interest if you'd like it. Excuse the me? Total interest up for the amendment on the 11 million seven hundred eighty thousand would be four million one hundred eight thousand two hundred seventy five dollars okay. thank you seeing no further speakers on the amendment i want to take a vote on the amendment so there is an amendment on the floor proposed by ms barnes to reduce this article article seven so that it reads eleven million seven hundred and eighty thousand dollars if you're in favor of that amendment, you will raise your voter card. Thank you. Down cards. All opposed? I declare the amendment has passed. We've had uh, some significant discussion on this article. The article is now amended. Is there any further discussion on the article amend as amended? Seeing none, Article 7 will appear on the ballot as amended. <coughs>